Welcome everyone to curl 800 March 20. <laughs> this has the wrong year on the text. Uh, 2023 it is actually, even if the text says 2022. So welcome to the 25th birthday curl release. And we are here and I'm try I will try to do the presentation in a regular curl release presentation thing. This is me. I'm Daniel. I uh, lead a project. I founded a project a long time ago and I'm going to try to go through go through the regular things a few a little bit a few numbers from the release security updates on, on vulnerabilities that we have fixed in this release. One change that we've done in this release and you'll like it. Um, no, it won't sort of uh, not many people will care about the, the only little change in this release. Uh, we did a few bug fixes and I will highlight a few of them. I'm going to mention a few things that we are going to remove going forward and some stuff that we might do next because of course 25 years is only the beginning and version 8 just started so there will be more things to do going forward. This time is release 215. 215 releases in 25 years. Yep, And this time around we got help from 20, 41 contributors and um, of course a lot of them knew more than half 21 people authored commits and we are now 1125 authors in total who have landed code in curl a majority of those actually only did it once okay and we have i mean this particular release only took 28 days since the previous one pretty much because we wanted it to hit on exactly this date right so this is the 25th birthday release version so we synced it in, in perfectly and then it ended up 28 days since the previous release and 25 years is exactly 9131 days since that uh, day in 1998 when i shipped curl 4.0 the original uh, version numbering came from the earlier tools so the version numbers were kept w when I changed the name of, of the project and the tool that I want yeah, that became curl in 1998 so anyway I I want to highlight a few security advisories six of them actually and I just want to uh, as usual emphasize that you should when you want to figure out things about our security problems you go to our site and read about them because there are a lot of different views and opinions about our flaws and you will find them in different places at, uh, with different descriptions but i will maintain that we do the best job to describe curl problems first one and again uh, this is uh, and this is a harry sinton and bonanza security advisory edition harry found and reported five of these six ones and you will see that some of them are very very old the first one and you will also notice that they are very niche so the first one the telnet option iac injection so iac is a telnet instruction really in the uh, when when you communicate with the telnet server the client and and the server they actually negotiate they have a little bit of a handshake and there's a, a little bit of a protocol language and IAC is a command in there, in that negotiation. So basically by sneakily uh, providing usernames or talent options to curl, you could um, tunnel through a command, an IAC, AIC command to the server. Like if your, if your application, for example, would accept a username from, this, from, from someone else or a telnet, connect, uh, telnet option without um, properly filtering the input then you would risk that someone could smuggle in uh, a, this this kind of command of course telnet is not very widely used these options are not very widely used and most applications will not allow users to do this so it is a severity low and you should uh, read up about it if you're using t uh, telnet with curl we fixed another one harry reported um, it's a, um, this is an uh, URL path thing. When you speak, when you do SFTP transfers with curl, you can you can use the tilde 
slash thing in the URL path. As if you do that as a first component, that tilde slash is supposed to become the user's home directory. But due to uh, bad code, bad my sort of inability to do the right thing, uh, you could also get it to add the user's home directory uh, wrongly. So you could possibly use this to circumvent filters and stuff. Another severity low, uh, read up about it if you're using SFTP. Number three, one of these, I would say, repeat problems we've had in curl over the years is that we've, we, the connection reuse in curl is really complicated or how curl knows that it can use an older connection when it makes a new connection. No, sorry, it can reuse an existing connection when you make a new transfer, right? So you do transfer one, two, three, and how do how does curl know that it can reuse the same connection for transfer two and three? So there's a very complicated function to check stuff and make sure that things match before it can reuse that connection. And again, we had a little flaw that made it too eager to reuse FTP connections, even if a few options had been changed that should prevent it from being reused. Uh, we rate it severely medium, but these are fairly rare FTP options. And also it is rare that an application actually would think that this is a different user um, even though some uh, some of these parameters might be, have been changed. And they rarely are actually changed during the lifetime of an application like this. So it's, it is a bit of a rare hit that, that this will hurt someone, but it could. So it's a security problem. Similar to this, the delegation, the GSS delegation to eager con reuse. Similar thing, it too eagerly reuse connections even though the GSS delegation option has been changed. Another Harry f uh, find, actually, uh, Harry found five of these six ones, and all of those that he found are over 4,000 days old. That Telnet one is over 8,000 days old. So, really, really ancient things. This is the, uh, sorry, the, the previous one, this, the FTP to eager connection reuse, this is the only medium severity ones the uh, the other ones are low severity rather unlikely to actually ever happen or trigger to anyone for everyone but you should still be aware and, and be careful if you're using one of these uh, protocols or options so the fifth one is actually i would say maybe there are two contenders for the most silly security problem this time. And this is certainly one contender and I'll show you the next one then because it might be even more sillier. But this one is actually just me not documenting properly how the, the restrictions and the implementations uh, sort of what I didn't implement for this feature. So I, in, in the previous release, actually in curl 7.88.0, I introduced HSTS sharing abilities for curl, but it's not thread safe. And I didn't really make it thread safe. I didn't intend it to be thread safe, but I, I omitted that from the documentation. I didn't write it anywhere because it really didn't hit me in the face as it should have done. So I implemented it so that I could share the data between handles serially if you use one handle then one handle then one handle exactly as we use in the curl command line tool for example when you do many transfers because that was the primary reason i did this but uh, of course then someone figured out oh i can share this between threads and when they do you could end up in an hsts double free or even a use after free i think if you're unlucky and the silly thing here is, of course, that the fix here is to just to document it, that no, this doesn't work, you shouldn't do it. Um, maybe more long term is to actually make it possible, but short term, don't do it. We also have a few other restrictions when it comes to sharing things between handles that are not thread safe. So this is not the first one either. This was reported by Hiroki Kurosawa. Apologies for my pronunciation. And uh, we rate it severely low because it's a very new feature. Uh, very sort of um, and it's very very timing dependent it's really hard to make this actually trigger and um, yes 
and the last one for this time around the, uh, and this is this is a, might be the most silly one because this is SSH connection to EG reuse still and again a connection reuse problem but this time and bear with me here this time it is an SSH connection an SSH here for curl means SFTP or SCP as a scheme in the URL but this is a problem we already had reported. So if you look at this CVE here on, on screen, on the middle, CVE 2022-27782, uh, we already had this reported and we already fixed it, but the fix was bad, broken, incorrect. So the, the previous CVE there, it was actually a little bit bigger and wider and, and bigger scoped. And, but it didn't fix this particular problem that was reported then and now is reported again, the exact same thing. This time we set severity low because these options for SSH that this concerns, um, they're, they're rather niche or they're usually, and they're, they're for setting the public and private keys for SSH users. And you very rarely actually change them without also changing user or the expectation of it being the same user so oh, it's a very low risk security flaw but still one severity low harry found it and it's been around for a long time this one as well um, and as you can see we have these fixed reward levels these days so if anyone who has reported a severity low issue is rewarded 480 USD and the severity medium is 2400 USD. So yeah, Whew. those are the six security problems that we have fixed, announced, reported. So if you, I, I went through them very briefly here and very casually. So if you, if you, if any of them, those sound like something you're in touch with in your apps or code or anything read up about all the details i've written a lot more and specified exactly when they were introduced and when they're fixed and blah 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 on on the advisory in the advisories that we have on the curl website <clears throat> we fixed counting 130 bug fixes in this release which i think is an amazing number on 28 days so that's what um uh, more than four per day on average many of those of course tiny tiny fixes you know documentation fixes and some test case fixes and so on but there are some that are bigger than the others and some are more noteworthy than others so i'm going to highlight a few that i think might be interesting to at least a bunch of users <clears throat> first uh, we start out with this funny <laughs> this is the description for the for the commit that we did, which is really doesn't say anything. But I left it like this because this is the line in, in uh, Git uh, when you do Git log actually. So we a long time ago we extended or replaced internal functionality in for configure. So with this particular macro uh, and configure them being the order tool thing. So do it, we generate the configure script so you run the configure script when you want to build curl for example on a lot of platforms uh, and this particular one then amend this clean this sort of uh, customizes the the cleanup functionality the this clean target in when it generates make files and it turns out that this over time at some point this broke or was became a bad idea because the the thing this was originally intended to fix was fixed in configure itself in the order tools projects i'm not sure if it was exactly configure or if it was automake but anyway so basically by removing this we fixed a particular nasty problem that could make the make file just balloon to insane sizes it could actually if if you reran uh configure it could just balloon up the make file to several gigabytes in size was actually a pretty annoying bug and it was hard to find but mm, now we fixed it and now configure runs better and we could remove a few extra custom source code files that we didn't really need anymore Woohoo! we fixed a bunch of regressions this time around 
again, of course, as usual, pretty much, and, and in particular, for example, we fixed the uh, timer statistics for time connect and time app connect. Uh, these turned out to be, I mean, we caused a few regressions when we introduced the new happy eyeballs between HTTP versions. So we, you, we can raise HTTP 3 and HTTP 2 connections against each other, for example. But then we also need, you know, handle the timers differently depending on success and failure, depending on which protocol versions that succeeds or fails and etc. So, yeah. Uh, in the curl man page for the curl command line tool, we now list all the global options. I call them globally in, in air quotes because that's sort of just a term we use within the com curl command line parser, really. Because when you specify curl command line options, there are a lot of them, right? And you can add the dash dash next somewhere, and the dash dash next resets the state of the command line parser pretty much. And then you add more options, and you can do dash dash next again, and then more options, and so on. But there are a few options that are not reset with one of those dash dash next, and we call them global options. And now the command um, command man page lists them correctly, so you can find them easier and understand the command line parser a little better, hopefully. It's a massive man page. It's there, there are a lot of nuances and, and, and subtle details, of course. So, yeah, we, we, we're trying our best to, to help our users to understand curl. It's sometimes hard to get the documentation really clear and accurate everywhere, of course. We fixed uh, the RAND use um, in curl. This is a rather a niche thing because uh, typically, when you build curl, you build with with TLS support, right? Very few people actually build it without TLS support. And if we build it with TLS support, we use, we typically use that TLS library's way to provide proper random or proper as in good entrop and, and entropy, so that we entropy, so that we would get good quality random values when we need random in curl. We use that for a few particular places, and and then we we are, of course interested in good getting uh, reliable and good random uh, stuff so that it's actually crypto cryptographically safe but if you build curl without tls we all, it, that has been a weak spot forever and now if you build it on a sort of a semi modern platform there are alternatives to to the real uh, weak rand and the, one of those functions is arc for random so this this improves curls random when you're building curl without TLS. A uh, rather niche case. I ran into some fun problems, or someone reported a, a bug, of course, in curls. It was actually a bug that also it it revealed itself in curls uh, header JSON output. So if you would output all the headers as a JSON object with curl, the command line tool you could see that it could actually miss a few headers in some weird ways. And it turned out that these two API functions, curl easy header and curl easy next header, we introduced them uh, a while ago, right? A few years ago. This is the headers API for libcurl for which you can use, you can extract header contents from, from a previous transfer or uh, HTTP headers. And um, it turns out that uh, because they used the same internal buffer, you couldn't use them. Uh, you couldn't sort of iterate through uh, through one list and get the detailed information about that header without a function because they would overwrite the same buffer. It's a little bit hard to explain. If you can read up about it in the bug, or you can just ignore it and and be aware that the headers API works slightly better now, and the command line tool header um, options for, for outputting headers work. They work much better now. Okay, so a, a few more. We didn't, we had another regression for FTP active mode with T, uh, with SSL, it says TLS enabled, like, you know, FTPS transfers when it sets up the second transfer in active mode. We didn't do it correctly, so it would just fail or sit there waiting. We did a number of HTTP2 bug fixes, in particular fixes that, ha um, in, 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 I mean, when we do many 
transfers over the same multiplex connection. You know, they're pretty much it's a complicated protocol. We fixed things in this area for a for a long time. And thanks to a, our recently added new test suite, basically, we have a lot of more controlled and, and tests for doing parallel tests and, and multiplexed transfers. So now we can have a better way to repeat them, reproduce and fix them and make sure that they actually work better. <clears throat> a thing that I thought we had fixed already a long time ago, but <laughs> now we don't send 100, the expect 100 continue for short put requests. We did this for short post requests uh, a long time ago. And, and we mistakenly didn't do it for puts and now we do it for puts as well. We had a regression that we didn't do domain uh, Unix domain sockets correctly when you would connect to an HTTPS server over Unix domain sockets. Okay, one final slide with bug fixes. <coughs> this is a, a performance uh, thing, performance fix. So, you know, um, when we, when you want to do a lot of transfers in parallel, you could do. The, you can use the multi interface, as we call it in curl. So you just create a lot of handles for 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 each transfer. You could do them a hundred of them. You can do a thousand, and then you can add them to the multi handle and multi curl multi perform. We just perform all those transfers in parallel in the same thread, um, and it'll just do them. And and two things. First. Um, when for every individual transfer, curl would do ignore and unignore signals. And apparently sometimes that sig action function call that it does to do those ignore and unignore could sometimes be slow. And in particular, if you, I mean, it would do that a lot. If you had a lot of transfer, it would iterate over a lot of transfers and do ignore and unignore. And now it does less of that because now it'll remember, oh, it already ignored for the next one. It doesn't have to ignore, unignore again. It could just keep the same state as the previous one in, uh, if it can. And usually it actually can. So for, for cases with thousands of transfers, you could go down to one ignore instead of doing thousands. So it's pretty significant win there in those cases where that's a slow call. And also related to that, Previously, we've just added all easy handles. When you added easy handles to the multi handle, we, we would just keep them in a single linked list. So you would have a linked list with a thousand entries or 10,000 entries. And in particular, when you, for example, add handles to it, you want to do transfers, but you, for example, you want to limit transfers. I only want to use five connections at the most to a single host name and you would do a thousand transfers to that host name. You would end up with 995 of those transfers queued they would end up in the pending state and that would be a, an inefficient way to adjust handle it because then you would have a thousand handles in the list but only five of them would actually do transfers right now so you would iterate over the list many times uh, unnecessarily many laps and this is just a uh, an, an improvement or or a performance boost so we just move out handles from that main list that are not, I mean, they don't ser serve any purpose in that main list. For example, the pending ones waiting to do a transfer and the ones in the message sent state, which are the ones that are completed and have already sent the message that they are complete. So we move them out of the main list and keeping them by that move, we make the main list much shorter and much faster to iterate over. So it's a, it's a gain in several ways, and in particular in combination with this format change. So we not do much fewer ignore, unignore, and now we also do that fewer because we don't iterate through the list as many times. Iterating through this list is, of course, a very, very fast operation in, nor in, in most cases anyway, so it's not a huge difference, but it's, um, it's a small thing and it was sort of just unnecessary. So we could, and also a fairly easy fix. So uh, a good thing. Another thing, of course, is that um, uh, another little detail in the URL parser, we actually accidentally allowed the percentage sign or letter or whatever it is uh, as a host name, a part of the host name, 
which it's not allowed in RFC 3986 and it shouldn't be there. You can still have it as a part of, an, of a URL encoded byte, or you can also have it as a separator uh, for zone IDs in IPv6 addresses, but not as a plain host name character. Local host percentage, or, or you know, adding that somewhere in the host name is wrong if you can't URL decode it, if it's percent uh, something. <clears throat> we also uh, fixed the URL parser slightly so that uh, it can now actually parse IPv6 addresses this exactly the same, I mean, in, in a more solid and consistent way, even if libcurl itself cannot support IPv6, right? If you build curl on a platform that doesn't have IPv6 support, or if you just explicitly dis disable that support, the URL parser will still parse the URL the same way as with IPv6 support. Basically, it made the URL parser more consistent and independent of IPv6 support in the library or not, which I think makes sense. It makes the URL parser a more solid, stable machine. Finally, well, finally, out of the bugs that I'm going to mention to you today, we fixed uh, an, um, a silly regression thing that's been around for, for a fairly long time by now, I think a year or two, maybe at least, that you couldn't bind to an interface with a host name you, if you built curl to use CA REST for name resolution. And what does it mean? Yes, if, if you would use curl dash dash interface and a host name, um, instead of an interface name or a direct IP address, you know, curl would resolve that host name and try to bind the local end of the connection to that particular address. And it would fail if you would use CARES because of a, I would call it quirk, bug issue maybe in CARES, but at least we could fix it in curl. There's also actually a pending fix in CARES. So they fixed their end. So even if, I mean, we could have just left stuff as it was, but I figured it was worth fixing because I don't know when the next CARES version is going to trickle out to the world. Oh, those were some of the highlights or some of the bug fixes that were worth mentioning, apart, of course, from the security bug fixes. I want to mention and, of course, particularly uh, highlight these pending removals. We will remove stuff from curl soon and you want to take a particular look at these two tls backends that we are we have highlighted for removal and why do we want to remove them because we want to simplify and not keep old stuff around at the nss tls backend and the gs kit backend there have been some voices raised uh, of concern that we should not remove them still uh, they seem to be on on target or <clears throat> in the plans for getting removed we'll see if that actually happens but if you really want to see them remain in curl you really should speak up because they are they are going in september we are going to remove support for legacy ming ming w version 1 this is the old compiled the original ming w MSYS thing that you build C code with. Uh, you can you can build curl with it. It's, we remove support for it because it's a lot of different quirks and workarounds necessary to, to make sure that this actually works. So we want to get rid of those quirks and, and issues and problems. So we're going we're going to remove it. The, I mean that this is an older legacy one. You, you really shouldn't use it anymore anyway. MSYS two and Ming W two has been around for years, so there's no particular reason for anyone to get stuck on this version. And of course, as I mentioned before, next year in July we're going to report <laughs> remove support for space separated node proxy patterns. I'm not going to repeat what it, that means, but you can look it up and it's a long time away still going forward from this grand day of 800 and the 25th birthday we're going to well likely release a version 8.1.0 in about 56 days 
it's not going to be exactly 56 days because we're going to switch. This is a Monday. We're going to do the next release back on a Wednesday. I prefer releasing on Wednesday. Um, yes. And what are we going to do? Perhaps, possibly, maybe in the next release, I say we have a few interesting things pending coming up. One of those being a long time coming the HTTP2 support to the pro to proxy. So if you set up an HTTP pro HTTPS proxy, actually, you can do HTTP2 to the proxy and then tunnel through whatever protocol version you want. Basically, uh, trimming down the number of connections you need to the proxy when you speak to the outside world. We might see IPFS. I've had that mentioned for a long time now as possibly coming next, and we'll see wh where that is going. The same thing for a file colon um, or file directory listings <clears throat> maybe there's a, a recent pr to add up onion dot onion filtering basically meaning that if you provide a host name ending with dot onion it shouldn't um, try to resolve it using the dns functions because it could then leak the name um, so yeah it's coming maybe and there's another PR already in, in progress for virtual hosting over FTP. And this is done by implementing support for the host command for FTP. This is actually an, an old uh, established FTP command that has existed for a long time. It's uh, documented in a separate uh, RFC. Yours truly is credited as a helper in that RFC. But, um, I'm not sure exactly how well used this is uh, and how <laughs> what kind of use you will get out of supporting it because FTP is old and ancient and I'm not sure people are actually caring about these new commands, new as in only 10 years old or something. But sure, the, it seems like a fairly easy thing to support. Um, so it, I think it'll, it will might come there as long as we fix everything correctly. Um, support for the AWS LC library <clears throat> is coming. It's, that looks like a pretty easy, straightforward patch. <clears throat> and what is AWS LC, you ask? <clears throat> I think LC stands for Lib Crypto. It's actually an OpenSSL fork by uh, Amazon. So it's, it'll be another uh, OpenSSL fork supported by Curl. So yes. That's uh, that is coming, and, and that seems like a very low, low risk, low friction thing. <clears throat> we have a, another patch for setting the HA proxy client IP. HA proxy is a lightweight protocol to send just IP address of the client to the proxy, so it just prefixes the, basically whatever it's going to do with an, a single line with IP information meant to. For the, for the proxy. And with this uh, particular PR, we could set the client IP and not just use the one that we have. So you could, you know, fake it or provide someone else's IP and stuff like that. Try out your HA proxy functionality, basically. So these are seven potential things to, to see in the next version. I don't think we will merge all of them, maybe some of them. And of course, it'll depend on the matter of stability, maturity, how it works. If the test goes through, if the documentation is fine, if everyone says, yay, we will do it. And uh, if we stumble on any of those factors, then we might not do them. I forgot about this one, right? So parallel tests is coming. Uh, Dan Fandrich is going to work on uh, adding support for running more and actually many more tests in parallel uh, instead of serially the way we do it now. And there, the, of course, with the goal that doing them in parallel will, should increase uh, the speed. I mean, the time needed to run through the tests on a typical machine. Right now, the, uh, it's a, it takes a growing amount of time, right? And then, of course, that's not a surprise, but the time it takes to run through them has become a minor obstacle in many cases and by by going parallel we should be able to drastically improve things for most use cases 
The next release is then planned, scheduled to happen on May 17. <coughs> and here's the right correct year as well. So um, that's going to happen most likely on that date unless we have something really scary happening before. And of course, as always, on the release um, notes in progress will be on this URL. If you have anything you want to get help with with your company, commercial support is available. This is what I do all day. So this is how I f um, fund my extravagant lifestyle. <coughs> If you find any issues, bugs, problems in curl, submit an issue over on GitHub. If you have any suspected security problem uh, in curl, submit it here and we will just talk about it in private before we figure out if it actually is a security problem. And if it is a security problem, we deal with it in private until we can release all the details about it in the pending release. If it's not a security problem, we will just uh, talk about it and then uh, convert it to a regular issue or pull request and, and deal with it in the open. But it's a very good practice to just, if you suspect that it is a secure problem, uh, submit it there. And of course, thanks to this uh, set of grand, fun, good sponsors, we can keep the project the way we do. A lot of sponsors here are either funding me, the project with infrastructure and uh, <clears throat> things, and a lot of the, the, the ones are also of you know, paying to the curl fund and the curl fund can then do things like paying for stickers and paying for, uh, we're paying the parallel tests project and we're using the fund to enhance the project and drive it forward because we may be 25 years old today, but there's no end in sight, right? And this project is likely to go on for, for a significant amount of time further than just 25 years. So curl is 25 years today exactly we bump the version number to 800 mostly because it's fun and i wanted to get the minor number down to a manageable version because uh, uh, because it turned it became very big and it became hard to keep track of and i really did not want it to reach 100 because i i fear that reaching 100 would cause confusion and because it would be confused with 10 or 1 or you know 7.1 or 7.10 or 7.100 so i wanted to have a solution before we reached 7.100 and then it seemed very suitable and very convenient or sort of almost like it was intended to happen to make sure that we could sync it with curl's 25th birthday today and release curl version 8. we did the first version 7 in the after the summer of 2000, so August 2000, we released curl version 7.1 actually, because I did some beta version of the 7.0 and then decided let's not confuse users and we went to 7.1, I think August 2000. So 22 and a half years, a little bit more with version 7 and now we are on version 8. Woohoo! There's of course going to be celebrations this night. Look it up if you see this video uh, very close to this event. So this is what I wanted to say this time. This is curl version 8 the, for the first time ever. And uh, thanks for watching. See you in a few more weeks. Bye.